Welcome to yet another edition of Triple T, where we dive into a song that reached the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. In previous episodes, I've talked about songs I really, really love. Uh, but this one, we're taking a more um, challenging approach. A song that maybe is loved by a certain segment of the population, but hasn't really aged well, maybe? Or maybe it wasn't that great to begin with. I report, you decide. What's the song in question? Why, it's this one, my friends. Honey, why are you calling me so late? Lips of an Angel by Hinder. The song reached number three on the Hot 100 in October of 2006. It's actually the band's only song to hit the top 10. I picked this one for Triple T because, uh, well, I've been seeing this viral TikTok video pop up recently. Maybe you have too. It's clear this guy is making fun of the song and its cringy lyrics, which we'll get into. But it's also got just the right amount of that super weird TikTok humor. He starts off pretending to answer a phone call discreetly, getting absurdly lower and lower to the ground, mugging for the camera with this creepy smile that honestly fits well with the song. He starts interpreting the lyrics through some pretty excellent hand gestures. It all works for me. But Lips of an Angel, the song doesn't. It never did. I loathed it when it came out, and I still do. But if you're a hardcore Hinder fan, hear me out. Stick around. It's got a few redeeming qualities. This is, after all, a song that managed to be at one point one of the biggest in the country. And that's nothing to sneeze at. So without further ado, let's dive in here. First of all, we got to start with the band. Hinder. They're a rock group from Oklahoma City, and as far as I can tell, they're the perfect example of self-made rock stars. They came from nothing, playing lousy dive bars for tips, which they saved for advertising and recording demos and EPs, and busting their butts trying to get airplay on the local radio station in a flyover state city with seemingly no connection whatsoever to the major label industry. As far as music stories go, these guys are the American dream right? They saved up enough cash, generated a big enough fan base in OKC to get notice from an indie label, signed to them, released their EP, got notice from the majors for a bidding war, and in 2005 signed to Universal Records. I'm skipping a few steps, but obviously you get the idea. These guys were all about the grind. Can't knock the hustle. Fresh off the jump, it's clear Hinder were made for primetime. Their major label debut, Extreme Behavior, went triple platinum. The first single, Get Stoned, got them significant rock airplay here in the States, but it was the second single that made them international stars, Lips of an Angel. The song was huge here in the US, sure, but it also made waves in Canada, where it reached number two, and Australia and New Zealand, where it was a number one hit. It should also be noted this song had pretty good crossover appeal. Country star Jack Ingram did his own version, which landed on the US country chart at number 16. Not bad. Now let's talk about the song itself. Since its release and the evolution of the endless ironic humor and meme-making machine that is the internet, hello, this is one of those songs that's timeless only in the sense that it's become a punchline. But let's start with the positives. The first thing is that this song is a well-crafted pop song, uh, for the most part. I think the chorus could be stronger, I think the main hook could be sharper, but the verses are incredibly memorable and evoke strong emotion when paired with that acoustic intro. That first melodic line is kind of unforgettable regardless of lyrical content. Let's see, other positives. Um, yeah, that's all I got really. I think this song is trash, not gonna lie. Musically speaking, I've talked about this style of post-grunge, post-new metal, overly commercialized form of mainstream rock in previous videos. The kind that was a big hit in the late 90s and into the early 2000s. Fellow YouTuber Finn McKinty likes to call it butt rock. Think Puddle of Mud, Creed, Stained, Seether, and of course, Nickelback. You know, that ilk. Hinder and Lips of an Angel is basically that sound two to three years past its peak. You can't even say it's of its time because it's not. It's of a recent past. You've heard it all before. It's Latter-day Hair Metal with Flannel, a rote power ballad with no punch on the loudest parts. 
quiet verses, a loud power chord chorus, an overly engaged growling front man. This sound was tired when it came out, and now it sounds ancient. And maybe I'd let all that slide if Hinder were even convincing at it. But sadly, it all becomes a foggy footnote. Or at least, until you start listening to the lyrics. This song is about getting a discreet phone call from an ex who the narrator wishes he had ended up with instead of the girl he's currently with, who, by the way, is in the next room, so we need to keep it down. And then he ends the chorus with this line. Girl, you make it hard to be faithful with the lips of an angel. <clears throat> okay, all I can really say here is... Ugh. Cringe is the word, right? This song makes me feel uncomfortable. This dude comes off as kind of a jerk. A, a relatable jerk, perhaps. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have gone through this conflict, this struggle. Someone in your past making you long for those days even when you're with someone else in the present. But I don't know, man. The whole thing gives me, like, divorced dad vibes. I don't know. If I'm being too harsh, please let me know in the comments, but I get the feeling that a lot of people are rubbed the wrong way by this song. It tries to pass off shady infidelity as, woe is me, we can't be together now, I'm the real victim here, and that's not cool. And I, I love this. Under the Wikipedia entry for the song, it mentions that it repeats the first line of the song again at the end, the honey, why you calling me so late, that part. But now at the end, it's, I'll just read it to you. At the end, it's less literal and more figurative with the underlying meaning of so late, not at night, but too late in life. Perhaps adding an element of sadness to the song as it ends with the plot unresolved. Okay, I don't buy that. It's not that deep, bro. This is just a dumb song about an unfaithful booty call. The last thing I'll say about this song is just overall the delivery feels like the group is trying too hard to make a lasting first impression. The vocalist is overzealous on the chorus, trying to emulate a certain kind of mainstream grunge singer that came before him, say maybe Eddie Vedder or even Scott Stapp, but he doesn't really pull it off and his arms swinging and his head shaking and his general body language in the music video gives me the impression that he's very nervous. This combined with the lyrics gives the whole song an unintentionally anxious effect, and it also feels contrived or manufactured. And also, as time has gone by, it has become unintentionally funny. So why did this song get all the way to number three in America? I think it has a lot to do with the melody. It's kind of an earworm. It had pop and country crossover appeal for that reason. It leaned into sonic rock tropes that were the norm by 2006 which helped it land with a large audience. And that's probably it. As a meme 15 years later, it's lightning in a bottle. As a song by itself, um, not so much. I'm giving it a two. Okay, that's this week's episode of Top 10 Takes. If you have a recommendation for the next one, please drop it in the comments below. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I mean, why not? You made it this far, right? I'm Ben the Playlist Fiend and Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. We'll be